Right, today we have uh, one more very important personality coming all the way from Verna to talk to us about entrepreneurship and how he started his company. The gentleman is Mr. Ricky Norona and the name of his company, Online Productivity Services Private Limited. Mr. Norona, welcome. Welcome to our program. Once again, I want to emphasize that the reason we would like to see enterprising successful entrepreneurs in Goa is to encourage our youth to think about business because as we all know, the jobs are getting scarce by the day. And with this uh, COVID, it is going to get even worse. So why not business as a uh, proposition? So we want to hear from you, your story, so that our youth will say, I want to be the next Ricky Norona, right? Yeah. So welcome and thank you for coming. So tell us, how did the idea of uh, online productivity services begin? What was it all about? Yeah, first of all, thank you very much for having me on Basil. I mean, it's really nice to be here. And uh, if I can inspire even two or three more people to, to do something like, like we have done. And first of all, right at the outset, let me point out, it's not me alone, actually. We're three of us, we're three founder directors. We are people who are friends from just after college when we were working. Uh, it's Arvind the other, Cynthia Antha and myself, there's three of us that started up. It's a very strange story, actually. Okay. Uh, all of us were teachers. We were IT teachers and we used to teach uh, kids uh, programming and we used to teach kids uh, uh, computer subjects and stuff like that. I've even taught at the university at the MCA level. And this was in the late 80s, early 90s. And uh, at that time, the main problem was that there were no jobs for the kids. They studied, they did well. First of all, they fought over each other for, to get good marks, to get into the courses. And then they studied and then they did well and they got good marks and they got lovely certificates. And then you would meet them and they'd either be working in hotels or they'd be working somewhere or the other. And they would say, there are no jobs for us here. So I used to first work in the government. I used to work in the government and, uh, and Arvin and Cynthia worked elsewhere. And then uh, we sort of came together when I used to head NIT, the training, the large training, all India training giant. I used to head their Goa centers. Cynthia was my senior faculty. We had a great team of teachers there, but it was the same problem. No matter how good the kids were, there were no jobs. So at some point we realized we got to do something about this. Of course, by then I'd quit the government and I was in the private service, so it was easier to give notice there and move out. I replaced myself there and we moved out and we started the company. The three of us are all three first generation entrepreneurs. Neither of our parents were anywhere near a business of any kind. All our parents worked for other people. Arvind's parents were government servants. Cynthia's parents worked abroad and my parents worked abroad and in Goa. So they were kind of horrified. You know, what are you guys doing? Are you going to make it? How are you going to make it? How are you going to pay salaries? How are you going to pay your salaries? Forget anyone else's. We thought we'll see how it goes. We started with 5,000 rupees, just enough to print letterheads and visiting cards. So, you know, we could give it out to people yeah. and say, you know, this is who we are. There was a very nice friend of ours who said, go ahead, don't worry, go ahead, use our office in Margao. So we had uh, his receptionist and a phone number that was on our visiting cards where our messages used to come. And, uh, and that's how we started. Uh, we, in the beginning, we used to handle a lot of corporate trainings and things like that. And then slowly we, we moved into development. We started picking up contracts. The first team of people sat in Arvind's garage, actually in Arvind's garage in Porvari, where we had two or three computers and we had two, three people working. Then we moved to a small office in Porvari. And today we're almost a hundred people in Verna. Wow. That's quite incredible. Okay. Tell me, you know, uh, People uh, usually think that Goa, being Goa, is not a good place for business, especially in your line of uh, work. What made you think of Goa as a, a possible business destination? Okay, yes, that's what they all said. They said, uh, well, they still say today, in fact, uh, people come from outside Goa because the government is giving uh, incentives for IT companies and things like that. So people pack their bags in Delhi and Gurgaon and come to Goa and think they'll start an IT company here and land on their noses because they seem to think that we Goans are lazy, we are too susegad, we're not interested in working well, but I managed to prove them all wrong. I think you need to understand 
the Goan mentality first. Okay, I think you need to understand that we Goans are second to none. I always tell people we are on the we are in of the same stock as South Indians who have made their name all over the world. We Goans have made our name all over the world also, but not so much in maths and science and things yeah. like that. You know, like if you watch right. in the US and you see a lot of these, the people who are right at the top in these things are South Indians and we are of that same stock. The only thing is that we have had, uh, well, positive or negative, however you look at it, we've had uh, 400 years of Portuguese colonization. So that's made us a little okay. bit more international than the rest. But I think the main thing with, uh, with doing something in Goa is understanding Goans. I'm proud to say that from the first day till today, we're 25 years this year for our company. We've always been a 100% Goan company. We've never needed an outsider to do anything. So all your staff 100%. is totally Goan. Top to bottom, everybody, everyone. Including the freshers. Everyone. In fact, we prefer freshers. Being from a teaching I'm background. I'm surprised you say that. <laughs> you see, the news that is around in Goa and in especially in the main metro cities, is that our universities, and I'm talking about the engineering college in particular, that they are teaching is all outdated. Something that uh, is not fresh, fresh, like, uh, you know, uh, it's happening in other places. So, first and foremost, you are saying you take only from Goa. We uh, prefer freshers. Prefer. 90% of they our are not, stuff. They are not uh, really ready, ready for for a, for the current uh, market in the sense of computers. How, 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 do, how, how does do it you, work? How does that work? Yeah. yeah. My aunt, my grand aunt, my granny's sister in Saligaon, she was also my godmother. She would say, if you stand under a mango tree waiting for the mangoes to fall, they probably never will. But if you water the tree and you put some manure and you put some salt on it this year, next year you can stand under and they'll fall. Okay, so, so you know, she used to, she had all these lovely Goan wisdoms here. Yeah. And I look at it that way. See, I find, I find that yes, what you say is absolutely correct. A lot of people, a lot of people tend to say that um, the, the, the quality of students coming out of the colleges and the university are rubbish. They have all outdated technologies. They don't know anything. Not true. Not true. They have all the theory. They have all the theory. It is up to us to teach them the practicals. Okay. It's up to us to get them to do what they want to do. And like I said, being from a teaching background, it just needs a little bit of guidance and a little bit of pushing. And the beauty about them is that they are clear. They are smart. They are willing to apply themselves. Sometimes someone with experience has all the wrong kind of experience. I find that. Okay. Grant about, I grant you about the training in the colleges and universities. Yeah. I grant you that. But what about the nature of our personality? You know, there are people who come to work in some of the smaller establishments. And when you tell them that the office time is 12 hours, makanaka. Yeah, we had that also. Because I think we Goans are used to a little bit of the finer things in life. You uh -huh. know, we want to spend a little bit more time. We want to go out for dinner. The young kids I, I work with want to spend time with their boyfriends, girlfriends. Some of the kids I, I work with have boyfriend, girlfriends in places like Karwar and Mangalore. Uh -huh. They want to spend the weekend there. So what we found, what works is that uh, a work-life balance, as they call it abroad. We are one of the few companies in Goa that has a five-day week. We've had it for years now. So we work five days. Okay. Uh, we do half an hour to 45 minutes extra every day to make up for the fifth day. So Saturday, Sunday is always off. That's one thing. Uh -huh. Then we found that even that was causing a problem sometimes because like you said, uh, sometimes people can't make it on time or something. Yeah. So now in addition to that five day week, we have what is called flexi time. They okay. work 42 hours a week. Right, okay. They work 42 hours a week. They can put in the 42 hours wherever they want uh -huh. and it works perfectly for them. I have one, no complaints. Right, I have right, no complaints okay. at all. Now, uh, one of the things that I read in the Herald about your company was that you're really, really an international company in Goa. Your, most yes, of your business is international. Yes, we are. I have two questions in this regard. One is how do you get the business and how do you operate uh, in terms of satisfying the client that whatever you have done for them is right? Okay, this is, this is another thing that hit me right at the beginning, you know. Uh, the, the fact that we Goans have more of an international outlook than a national outlook, sad but true. Okay, I mean, I'm Indian. I don't have any doubt about being Indian, but uh, we can work better with international people than with Indians. Yeah. The Indians will cut on every rupee and they'll bargain yeah. and they'll scream and they'll shout and stuff like that. So right from the beginning, what we started doing is we started looking for business internationally. In fact, one of the first contracts we did was for a Brazilian company. Okay. And when we did that contract, we realized that 
they fit in so well with us Goans, so well with us Goans. Our culture, everything, you know, just fits in perfectly. Even our work culture was like theirs. You know, I mean, when someone comes down from Delhi, he's going to build his, bring his Delhi work culture to Goa. Yes, right. And he's going, to, he's going to do stuff like he's going to assign people to a project and people are going to be doing that project with a long face. We don't do any of that. When a new project comes in, okay. the staff will choose who want to do it. Yeah. They will choose. So when there is a team of six working on a project, there are no long faces because they've chosen to work on that project. The projects are kept open to everybody and people can choose who wants to do that All project. Right, they can okay. choose if they don't want to do the project. So when the client comes down and he says, why are you working on this project? And the team member says, because I chose to be on it. He's like, you get to choose a project here. And the team member tells him, we always choose our projects. And he says, aren't they assigned? And the team member says, no, never. And, and you know, the guy, the guy, he sees, he sees something that he likes. Uh -huh. So what, ha what, ha what happened was that we realized that these international things, sadly, uh, uh, I mean, they don't work for the rest of India, but they work very well for us. Okay. For 25 years, I have handled business development for the entire company alone. We have no business team. We have no business development. We had no business development manager. I'm a technical person. And, and when everybody said I could sell things well, I would always tell them I'm not selling. I'm trying to understand what you want and I'm trying to meet that need, you know, right. I've never sold anything. So uh, we, it actually it just works. I was looking at your brochure as in the, in the, on your website, you know, and it talks about gaming, social media, healthcare, travel, sports, entertainment. You do everything. We do everything. We are a services company. Ah. Okay. It's like when you go into a restaurant, uh, the restaurant should be able to serve you Chinese, Italian, continental. Give you American pepper steak as well as it should be able to give you go and shakuti. Right. So we are like that. We viewed it that way, and we have separate teams that handle it. Ah. It's not like everybody has to do everything, and that again they get a chance to choose. We've actually had people that joined one team and shifted to another team and another team and another team and did a full round of like four teams in the company for their own satisfaction. So it's it's not impossible. It's like a cook, you know, cook cooks Chinese ah. and then somebody shows him how to do Italian and with a little bit of shift of change he can do Italian. Right. So it's the same thing. The business, the business side is okay. very different. Leading to this uh, thing is, say a guy who yeah. is a yeah. fresher, yeah. works with you say three to five years, you pay him reasonably well. Uh, he has now learned all the tricks of the trade. Do you have a, a dropout problem, people leaving the company? We don't call it a dropout problem. What okay. do you call it? I tell you, that's another thing we look at differently. We were started as a company to provide Goan jo Goan's jobs. Okay, that oh, was my okay. main intention and I think I've very well fulfilled that because if you look at even Glassdoor and all the other sites where, uh, where, where employees put up their feedback, they say it's one of the best places in Goa for a first job. And that was always my intention because like you said, there's a bit of a gap between the training and the praxis. Yeah. Okay, so that gap is what we are trying to fulfill. So people come into us out of the colleges, yeah. we train them up, they become really good and productive. If they stayed forever, I couldn't give other people jobs. I want them to move. <laughs> I like that. I like that. I need them to move. So what we do is... When so you're someone, very altruistic in your thinking. No, I'm not altruistic. I'm a little bit crazy. Good crazy. <laughs> no, it's fantastic. If, no, if, no. If you I want, need them to move. If you want people to leave who you're... Let me free. tell you. Yeah, let, let me tell you how this works. Let ah, me tell you how it works. Ah. It works like this. When they join us, I always tell them, see, if you're looking for a job in Bombay, Bangalore, Pune or something like that, please go now and take that job, you know, because I need a a two year commitment from you, just two years. It takes me six months to train you up. It takes you six months more to be productive. And in the next one year, you'll be handling everything. Once you get to that stage, then I would like you to look for something else. I would like you to go abroad. You're young, go see the world, come back, bring chocolates for everybody. Every week we have chocolates in the office. Somebody or the other is visiting again. So we actually encourage them to move with three caveats. One, when you're moving, please tell us, don't get up one morning and say, I cannot come from tomorrow because that leaves the project in a lurch. Two, somebody trained you, train the next guy. Few days, hand over to him, show him how to do. We always have interns, we have people waiting in the wings to fill in, always. So what happens is normally people spend, okay, we have a few people who have to be here, elderly parents, have to live in Goa, property, whatever. But that's maybe about just about 15% of the company. The rest is continuously changing and evolving. And I love that. I love that because they move on, they go elsewhere. 
the new set comes in, they get a chance, they train them up, it's no stress on anybody. Before they would say, no, no, the senior guys are going, what will we do? You know, the guys left behind. Yeah. But now they realize that it's working well. And not only that, the guys who go out, send us back business. How about that? All right. Okay. So it is working uh, it to your advantage well. in many it ways. It works very okay. well. It works to everyone's advantage. Everyone's okay. happy. I actually give them certificates, you know, saying that this person, I always tell them, don't quit and then look for a job. Tell me, I'm looking for a job abroad. And I'll give you a certificate that says you're part of my team, you're a good worker, and you are looking for a job abroad, and I recommend you. Nothing works better than the recommendation of a current employer that anyone is holding. Now tell me, out of the people that leave you, do they actually go to the metro cities or do they go abroad? I was waiting for you to ask that question. You have three people, three people that even if you look on uh, on uh, LinkedIn or anywhere, you'll see their first job was at Online Productivity Solutions. They said they wanted to go abroad. I told them, we're a Microsoft partner, apply to Microsoft. And all three have first job, Online Productivity Solutions, second job, Microsoft Seattle. They go straight there. They go wherever they want to go, whatever they want to do. None of our people has ever been refused anyway. We get glowing reports from everyone, including the people who've gone. They always come back and say, thank you so much. You taught us everything right. It's so good. You know, mm. I mean, it's it's still the teaching thing. You know, it's like part of the teaching thing. See, one thing that I didn't understand, I'm still trying to understand yeah. it. A company like Infosys, mm. they are supposed to be one of the giant yeah, companies yeah, in yeah. India. They apparently train fresh graduate for five months before they put them on a job. You think uh, that is a reasonable thing or what? I think it's ridiculous. See, uh, there's, uh, if, you, if you ask me my opinion, because I've been in this line 25 years and I'll tell you something. First of all, you cannot take a person like, uh, you know, if, if somebody, if let's say somebody wants to be a pastry chef, yeah. let's say, okay, a simple example, someone wants to be a pastry chef and you take him and you tell him, I'm going to make you a barbecue chef. Oh. Okay. He's, he, he or she is always going to be a little dissatisfied with that because it's not what he wants to do. So what we do at our interviews is we identify what they would like to do first. So we fit them into a position where they're going to enjoy what they're doing. The second thing we do is we call them probationers for the first six months and we put them with an existing team that's doing what they would like to do. Right. I don't have to train anybody. They learn on their own. They automatically, you know, when it's something you want to do and you see someone doing it, nobody needs to train you. Most of the companies make the mistake. They will pick up fresh graduates and they will deploy them where they want to put them. I've had staff leave me saying we're getting a job at Infosys and it's in Bangalore and it's paying us more. Oh, please, no problem. You know, free up space for some more guys to come in. And, uh, and when that happens, they go to Infosys and, and they've been working for three or four years on a technology they like. And Infosys will force them to work on another technology. Painful, painful. I must say your, your, your thinking is very refreshing <laughs> because uh, what you're telling me about other companies is what is true. I know yeah, I also yeah, worked in companies yeah, and I know yeah. they, how they operate. To do, uh, but uh, to but it is very refreshing to see your trend of thinking. You have uh, to see what someone wants to do. Right? And quite, quite incredible. Now tell me, uh, let's move on to an uh, area of uh, government versus private companies. Uh, we have news that uh, you can't start a company without 100 uh, licenses. You need this thing. You have to run around in circles before you can even start something. How difficult really is it to start a business and go out today? It's not difficult, actually. I'll give you a few pointers. First of all, 25 years, we've never paid a single bribe to anybody. Congratulations. Ever, ever. ever. Uh -huh. I got a big poster up in my office, which... Uh, so it basically says the same thing that we completely refuse to pay bribes to anybody for anything. We've never paid a bribe. We've got every single, every single clearance and certification that we need. We've got from the government, from every agency, we've got fire certification, we've got health, everything by meeting the criteria. I'll tell you how easy it is. It's really easy, but you've got to have a little bit of a hard head because you've got to go and bang it against the wall for a little bit. Like when we were applying for the first EDC loan, they took eight months to give us the loan. Every day I would go and spend half the day at EDC chasing the paperwork to an extent where about two, three months down the line, the people at EDC thought I was one of their staff. <laughs> <laughs> they would ask me, which department are you and give me a cup of tea when I came in in the morning there because I was there every day. But 
you know, it's it's like you got to never say die. Fortunately for me, I have my other two founder directors who take care of most of the technical stuff and they handle everything. Like even while I'm here talking to you today, they are at the office. They are making sure everything happens. They are great people. Okay. In here, they are 10 times more than me. Okay. I'm the talker, but I'm the guy with the hard head and I'm the guy who's worked in the government before. So I know how these things work. You know, if a file's not moving, uh, they tell you. Tell well, me, so uh, it, 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 it took you eight months. Yeah, it took me eight months, but we got the finance. We uh -huh. got the finance. So uh, now it's a lot easier. Now it's a lot easier. The government is giving them incentives. The government's giving them stuff. The government's basically encouraging people, you know. What about uh, basic infrastructure? Like for example, electricity, internet speeds, this okay. basic thing that I'll tell you, I'll tell you my, I'll tell you my take on this whole thing. Okay. Uh, as an IT person who's been running a company in Goa for 25 years now and successfully for that matter, yeah. because you know, we're still even right in this uh, virus yeah. days, we paid everyone's salaries, we paid everything. There's no problem at all. So I'll, I'll, I'll wish to go on record with this one. Nobody needs any fancy infrastructure. The government does not need to build up IT parks and things like that. Okay. IT can be done anywhere, anywhere in anywhere in Goa. You can, you can do IT in, in your own house. You can do it in a friend's place. Uh, there are government rules that says IT can be uh, run. IT companies can be run in residential premises. It's not a problem. Internet is available to anywhere in Goa now. Electricity, you can have your electric supply or you can have solar. There are companies that are doing solar. Friends of mine in Porve are running their entire units on solar. So my suggestion to anyone is if you're planning to set up something like we've set up, we did this many years ago, of course, we're not in the industrial estate. We are not in any of these places you would imagine. We're in the beautiful part. We are in Verna village surrounded mm -hmm. by coconut trees. It works. Okay. So uh, you're very, very positive in your thinking. I, 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 I enjoy that. I really do. I enjoy that. Yeah. But uh, tell me one thing. Current, we have COVID. Mm. How is that affecting you and what do you see about the future? Okay, I, I see that it will be a slightly different future. Okay, because uh, when, uh, you know, for years, for years, all our people were very comfortable in the office. We have a very nice office. Come over sometime. Everybody, I always invite everyone, come over a cup of coffee and a plate of cookies is always there for everyone, anytime. So we have a comfortable office, air conditioned, all the facilities, everyone used to get together, have lunch together and everybody was kind of, you know, used to that. And then suddenly when they, off, when they suggested the lockdown, everybody panicked. So we moved everyone to home, to working from home. And today it's working very, very well. Everybody is doing their work. They're handling stuff. They're delivering to the clients. The clients are getting invoiced. The clients are paying and we are paying salaries. No problem at all. No problem at all. It will be a slightly different normal as everyone's saying. This is going to be the new normal. So I believe people have to think about working from home. Okay. Offices will still be there because even our people come into the office. Sometimes they want to have a team meeting. Like the other day, uh, one of my team said, so we're all coming in on Monday. We need to have a team meeting. So they'll all come and they'll have a team meeting because it's close. Everybody has bikes or cars or something like that. But it's going to be a little new normal. Yeah, but uh, oh, this Zoom thing has started and meetings can be done, yeah. uh, you know. Yeah. So do, oh, do you see that there will be actually no offices in the future or a very little of office i would love that i would love that because my biggest my biggest gripe with the government now is that in the name of promoting it they're taking up huge tracts of land building up what they call it parks and selling it to the highest bidder which according to me is the completely wrong thing to be doing encourage it don't that's real estate that's real estate trading that's all it is i mean the it department is just basically selling real estate i mean they should rename themselves to the real estate department they're not doing anything else there's no facilities we've not got a single government facility or incentive till today ever not a cent from the government for anything ever so what are you really telling me <laughs> If I can understand you right, <laughs> is that the government the government says in the press yeah. that it is promoting business, Absolutely. this thing, that thing, that thing. What you're really saying it is doing nothing. They're doing nothing. They've given they've given a few three lakhs and five lakhs and six lakhs to, to a few startup companies. I'm sorry to say, but most of them are going to fold because startups are startups are something that um, I'm I'm not saying that all startups fail, but startups are not something that are that are going to go the long run. Startups people uh, startups should be funded by venture capitalists, not the government. I don't want my money to go into funding a startup, the taxpayers' money. You understand? Yeah. Let some venture capitalist put the money and let him make the money out of that startup, isn't it? If he goes for a million, let him go for a million. That's how they do it abroad. Startups should be getting from the venture capitalist. Uh, 
actual companies that provide employment, companies that are that are based in Goa, companies that are going to go the long run, companies that are going to walk the talk. These are the companies that should be uh, supported. There are two. There are two of us that are over 25 years. Just two companies in Goa that are over 25 years. Progen Systems in Ponda and us. Neither of us have got a cent from the government ever. Wow. That's quite creditable. Quite, quite creditable, actually. Because I always tell people, you know, I always tell people that we exist in spite of the government. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's that's what I normally say. Okay, one last question. Sure. I want you to tell our youngsters mm. what are the three or four things important for them to think about their life in the future. Is it employment? Is it business? Is it entrepreneurship? What should they think about, and what do they need? to be able to do what they what you think is the right thing to do okay now okay i've done all of these i worked for the government so i was an employee i worked in the private sector for the large private sector company so i was an employee there also i earned a good salary okay but i think at the end of the day the main thing you need to think about when you're looking at your life in general is about making some difference you know there's this saying of what use having lived if you've made no difference you might as well have not lived isn't it What's the point? What's the point of me having lived? I lived, I bought a car, I bought a house, I lived, I had kids, I did this, I did that, I did that. Did it affect anyone else? No. Did it make a positive difference to anyone? No. Might as well have not lived, no? So. The I, so, me and myself yeah. concept is wrong. So, yeah. So, my thing is that look at what you can do for Goa. I mean, I've always thought of this, you know. And in the bargain, it's if it's something like, I look at a couple of things. One, what does Goa need? Do you like doing it? Okay, like I liked IT. Okay, I'm, a, I'm originally a mechanical engineer, but I loved IT. So I thought, okay, let me get into IT. Can I do something for Go? I could have just started a small IT company where I looked at making a profit. Incidentally, in 25 years, we've never shown a profit. We don't intend to. We never will show a profit. The money just goes back into the company or the people. We've never shown a profit. Never will. <laughs> How about that? All the founder directors are on a salary. Okay. All of us are on a salary, just like everybody else. We're all professionals in the company. So Everybody whatever does job. comes excess, you give as a bonus. No, we don't. We make sure there is no excess because everything goes into back into the people or back into the company. Better equipment, better facilities, better this, better that, better that, whatever. Okay. So you invest and then of course, in the, yeah, and then of course salaries go up and stuff like that. Right, okay. So uh, would you say that uh, in the in the private sector, hmm. in the private sector in, or in the IT yeah. business, you are one of the best? Paying employees uh, in Goa? Maybe not. Maybe not the best paying because uh, there are there are uh, you know to be able to pay to be able to pay very high salaries like the guys in the metro do, you have to be able to reach out to the high paying jobs and yeah, okay. uh, and you have to be able to pull in that kind of business. Still now we've not been able to pull in that high paying type of business. We pull in like the mid range. You know we deal with the SMB segment. You know the small okay, and medium yeah. businesses. So so they I, I'm not I'm not doing any work for Lockheed Martin or I'm not doing any work for Boeing or anything like that but if i got that kind of contract oh i pay better than the better than the other guys right. but but what we are doing covers everything well we are paying very decent salaries okay we are paying salaries that nobody has any reason to complain about okay and uh, like i said the main thing about about thinking about doing something uh, as a, as a young as a young guy just out of college is one uh, think about what goa needs two would you like to do it and if you would just go for it, it works. It just works. It just works. You know, I mean, you don't have to worry about the money coming in. We've always, we always have money to pay salaries. We have money to do everything. We have money to have an annual outing. Everybody's cribbing this year that we can't go for an annual outing because of the lockdown. But generally, <laughs> what is the starting salary of a young engineer in Goa? A starting, I'm not talking about okay. your company, generally. Generally, it would be between 15 to 20. Okay. Yeah, and on a metro? probation. On a probation. Now, in a metro, they would pay them 25 to 35. The only five thousand difference. Five to ten. Five to ten okay. different. Yeah. But then, then you have to uh, think not, of the rent yeah, and this and that. Not only that. Not only that. Uh, there, you may not get to do what you want. Okay. okay. Which is why. Which is why we have a huge uh, amount of freshers joining us and doing a great job. Some of my best work has been with freshers. Really, some of my best work has been with freshers. They have a saying. No, they say doctors and uh, IT people are most effective three years after college. Uh -huh. Up to three years after college. Beyond that, it dips unless they keep themselves yeah, abreast. Right. Well, you hear it from the expert, Mr. Ricky Norona, the managing director of this wonderful company that he has set up. His thinking is quite revolutionary, I would think, in, in terms of 
what is happening generally in the world today. And, uh, and I'm very, very happy to hear this from a local, wonderful Goan who has done so much for Goa and for the prospects of younger people. Thank you, Mr. Norona. Uh, do wish you all the very best for continuing what wonderful thing you are doing. All the Thank best. you so much, Basil. Thank you for having me. Hopefully, we can do a little bit more too. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you.